I'm going to tell you the truth about the gluteus maximus. Now the gluteus maximus, what a strong muscle. Not the strongest, that would be our jaw according to strength by weight, but the gluteus maximus is the biggest muscle in the human body and it needs our attention to keep it toned and tight. There's a science called kinesiology and if you understand the science behind what you are doing, you will be able to do these gluteus maximus exercises so you get the fullest benefit. I'm going to tell you everything as we work out. So let's get going. We are going to tone, we are going to tighten, and we are going to sculpt our favorite muscle, the gluteus maximus. We're going to talk about how effectively to work the gluteus maximus and why. So you guys, you know this crease right here in your hip? When you pull it like this and the crease gets smaller or tight, you know, you tighten it. Like if your finger was here, your finger would get tight in that crease. That is called hip flexion. There's nothing about the glutes in hip flexion. What the glutes do, their main job is to extend that crease or take the fold out of that crease. So if you're standing here and you put your hands here and you kind of stick your booty out like this, you feel like there's a hollow place. Well, when you make that flat, that place right here, you're extending the hip. And when you put your leg behind you and not arch your back, but keep your back straight, that you can feel that hip extension or getting longer. That's when we are working the glute because its main job is hip extension. So we're going to start with a series of exercises. I'm gonna show you lots of them. They go from kind of simple to more difficult. So we're going to be doing about one minute intervals on many different exercises that target the glutes particularly. Let's start off here. Now we know that when this goes flat, that's hip extension. And when it goes behind us and stretches even more, that's the glutes. So as we come down into this squat, let's put your weight on your heels. Now, as you're coming up, you see this gets flat. If you don't get it flat, if you still have this little dent, you didn't do the hip extension. You got to get this all the way flat right here. So I'm going down and then up and I get it all the way flat. So this is the easiest of all of the glute exercises. To make it a little harder, you would hold on to weights to make yourself, you know, heavier as you come up. But the truth is, we want to get all the way into that hip extension, get this all the way flat. Because as that crease uncreases, we are performing hip extension. Now, this isn't the super duperest of the hip extensions, right? Because our leg isn't going behind us, which is even a bigger extension. But this is the little warm up. So we're just going to go a few more seconds. We want to put your weight on your heels and then come up to your whole foot. That's just getting us warmed up. Let's go on to our next glute exercise, which is a little bit harder. You can go to the wall or you can get a chair, but this, you know, we want something to help us balance. We're going to bend your knees just a tiny bit, go onto a diagonal or a flat back and take one leg behind us. Now I want to warn you, you don't want to be moving your back like this because that would mean you're not really doing the hip extension. You're just arching your back. So right here, one leg is behind you. Now pull your tummy in tight. As this leg comes up and down, what's happening to that crease? It's stretching out, right? That crease is getting just a little bit stretched every time. So this is hip extension and we feel that glute right on top. When the leg comes up and extends, we feel it working. Now you gotta keep your tummy in, in, in tight so that your back isn't moving around, but it's truly 
the glute that is lifting that leg. And how do we know? Because the hip, put your hand right here, you can feel that hip stretching, right? Getting the crease uncreased whenever that leg goes up. Yes, the standing leg you are really going to feel also, maybe even a little bit more. So we're going to do one minute on the other side as well. So come on up. I know the standing leg, your hip is really having to stabilize to hold you up. So yes, that's getting the work too. Let's take the other leg behind. Now remember, your back is not going to move at all. It's only the contraction of the glute. And if you put your hand right here, where that crease is on creasing so that you can really feel the stretch in there, you will know that that hip is extending. Hip extension unfolds that joint. And that's how we know we're working on the gluteus maximus. Back is not moving, not at all. Now it's best if you can keep that leg behind you really super straight. We don't want the hamstring getting into the act, you know, with your knee bent. So we try to keep that leg really, really straight. The tummy is pressed in so that the back doesn't move and we know we are targeting. You can put your hand on your glute just to see how it's going. And there's our one minute interval for the gluteus maximus. Let's come on up, Let's shake it out. And we'll go on to the next exercise for hip extension, which we know is the gluteus maximus. Now, one of the most well-known and popular moves for glute toning is called a deadlift. You see people at the gym doing it all the time these deadlifts with heavy weights. But you know what? I don't like to do those because as careful as I am, it always feels like hmm, it doesn't ever feel good on my lower back. So this is another way to practice something like a deadlift. It's really effective. And I find that it doesn't really bother my lower back at all. So we're going to do kind of what we just did. Get a weight. And that weight is going to track down your leg like this. Now in the future, it would be great to hold two weights and maybe you can even today to hold two weights. And what we want to do is this. Now you can see that the extension of the hip is actually happening in my standing leg, right? So I'm going down and then on my way up, it's the standing leg that is increasing the hip or extending it. And that's how we know that it's the standing leg that's getting the work. Now, it would be great if you had two weights and you could, you have the balance to do it like that. But if you're not there yet, you just hold one weight, let it track down your leg. So it's gonna track down my standing leg. My other leg is behind me. Now I try to just put one finger on the chair and let go as much as I can. I just want that little extra help with balance, but I don't want to take any of my body weight onto that chair because I want my standing leg to have all the weight. Your tummy is pressed so tight against your spine and maybe there's a tiny bend in your standing leg. Now you really don't feel this as much when you're holding onto the chair a little bit, but as soon as we learn uh, our balance, practice our balance and don't have to have the chair and can hold two weights, you'll find this is an extremely effective exercise for the gluteus maximus, all the way down the back of the leg, really. Okay, let's change sides. So we're gonna take the weight and track it down our standing leg, bend your standing leg just a little bit and maybe just one finger on the chair. And here we go. So we're concentrating 
on extending the hip on the standing leg or taking the crease out of that hip socket. And when we do that, when the crease comes out and we get our sit bones straight down and the pelvis level, we know we have hip extension. But you know, that leg that we're working on, the standing leg hip extension, we're trying to come all the way up straight. Straight standing up. And maybe just one finger on the chair, or maybe you don't need the chair at all, which would be great. And there is one minute. Now that's a little hard on your lower back. So to stretch it out, let's bend your knees, put your hands on your thighs and just round into like cat, yoga cat. Get the tailbone under, just stretching out that lower back. And roll it up. And we're on to our next exercise. So we're going to do it with the chair. Both knees will be a little bit bent one leg behind and then bring it up to tabletop. Now we do not want our back going, see now my back is going and it looks like my leg is going up and down, but it's really just my back making that leg go up and you know, look like it's going up and down. What we wanna do is not move our back at all. Bend your standing leg. Now the standing leg is gonna really get a lot of work too. And here we go, extending the hip. So it's getting just a little bit stretched in there. It goes from straight to stretched. You will notice that the standing leg is really getting a lot of work too in the glute and in the hip because it is stabilizing. In other words, you're not collapsing and falling to the floor, right? So that hip that whole area has to become very, very stable. Now we wanna keep the tummy really lifted and the leg can just go up a tiny bit, but it doesn't go below that 90. See here I'm 90 and then a little above because we want the hip to extend. I know we're feeling that standing leg a lot because of all the stability. Your hip is trying to, um, you know, your glutes are trying to not let you fall to the floor and just collapse, so they have to hold that hip stable. And here's the other side. Let's just stretch though. That's a really big stretch. That's a lot of weight on that standing leg and the stabili stabilization of the hip there, that's what's gonna give you all that work. And on the other leg, we're extending the hip, so we know we're getting the gluteus maximus. Here we go on the other side. So one leg back, we're coming up to 90 degrees. We wanna be 90 and above without ever moving your tummy. So let's put your hand on your tummy. See, it is not moving, right? Nothing in your back is moving. Nothing in your waist is moving. It's all in that glute back there, contracting, and that's what makes the hip extend and the leg go up a little bit. Now the standing leg, we have a plie or a bent standing leg. Pull that tummy in tight, shoulder blades are down. Yes, in this one minute, you are really gonna feel it on that standing leg. There's one minute, so let's stretch it out. We're gonna, we only have two exercises to go and they get progressively harder. So the first one is on hands and knees and it's kind of like what we're doing at the chair. We wanna be careful, we never go like this with our back. One leg is going to come up and you know, I see people doing um, this sometimes when they do this exercise, see how my back is moving? And that's 
not calling on the glutes at all. So what we wanna do is call only on the glutes, get your tummy up in between your shoulder blades. You know, you don't wanna valley in between your shoulder blades, but really push it up. Get this thigh parallel to the floor because then you're stretched in that crease. And from there, without the tummy moving, we want to lift the leg and stretch out that crease. Now, if you move your back, it's not stretching out the crease. You've got to keep the pelvis super level, tummy in, and just go for the contraction of the glute. How do we know the glute's contracting? We're stretching out that hip. We're extending it, and you can kind of feel. Now, of course, that standing leg is also going to be getting to the work because you can feel your hips stabilizing you. Tummy is not moving at all. So the leg that's up in the air, that's the one where the glute is getting the work, the most work, contracting. So we're gonna stay on that glute. Staying on this same glute for the next minute, we're going to bring it in, come around. Now the one that was in the air, that's the one that we are going to stay on. So let's lift. Now as you do this lift, see you're here, this is creased. As you go up, what happened? That became flat. So you know you're doing hip extension when this part is flat. Under here, you can feel those glutes. So if we just pulse up the glutes, not your back, because what we're trying to do is stretch out, stretch out every time in that hip crease. Going on, we're gonna stay on the glute, stay on the glute. Now just come up, no pulsing. Just come up and hold. Now you can feel this glute is hard, but if you take your heel and dig that heel into the floor, just push down, push down in that heel, it forces the hip up a little bit, and now that glute is super hard. And then we take the toe to the ceiling, if you can, pulsing up eight times. Here we go, eight, seven, six. We're just stretching out that crease. And then, we're gonna hold it like an isometric. So just hold 10, nine, eight. Dig your heel into the floor. Push up a little harder by digging that heel down into the floor. Really drive it down there. Now we're gonna hold this isometric as you take knee to knee. Don't let anything fall. And if you want, here comes some pulses, lift lift. Now, if this hurts your back at all, I want you to stop, lay down on your back and hug your knees or put both feet on the floor. Everything rolls down. This is where you go when you can't take it anymore. And legs up the wall. Just a little stretch. We're ready for the other side. Here we go. We're going to wear out that other glute, the left side. So tummy is up. Toe is to the ceiling. Right under here is what we want to stretch because when that extends, we know the glute is doing the work. So we're gonna start. And I want you to pay so close attention to your back not moving at all. It's just the contraction of the glute. Get the belly button up and in. In between your shoulder blades, don't let it fall into like a valley, but you push the floor away. Keep flat in between those shoulder blades. Tummy is up, not moving the small of your back at all. It's all in the glute. It's all in the stretching, opening and extending of the hip socket. You know, that line across there. Tummy is in, like it's swooping in your tummy. Well, that's, that's the feeling you want to have. Hands are pushing down, your neck is long, so we've got the beautiful form. Knee is straight down, we're not turning it out. We're just doing hip extension. Even though it's small, 
the hip is extending. That's how we know we are getting the gluteus maximus. There's one minute. Now the leg that was up in the air, that's the one we're gonna stand on. So let's come on around. Down we go. Now, as we lift the hips up, it's almost like you wanna tuck your pelvis under a little bit so that this part stretches. So instead of just letting it fall, get that like tuck under feeling. It's gonna stretch out the quads too, but we're really trying to unfold that hip socket, you know, that line. So dig the heels into the floor. And if you like, you just do little pulses up from there. And what you're thinking of is kind of tucking under your pelvis so that we keep this flat and extend it. Now, if you like to make it a little bit harder, we're gonna pick one knee up and the leg that's on the floor, that foot, drive your heel down, down, down into the floor as you feel like you're slightly tucking under in the pelvis and this will stretch out right here and leg goes up. Now you can hold this isometric, but I don't want you to fall because when you do, it creases the hip socket. We wanna press up so that this stays flat. Now the bottom heel on the floor, it's digging, digging, digging into the floor. It's driving down. You could do some little pulses here, but don't go down too far. We're just really trying to extend the hip. Dig that heel into the floor. And if you like, you just hold it or pulse it. Keep the hips high, hold it now. That bottom heel is gonna dig into the floor as this goes on the diagonal and that long lever makes everything heavier, doesn't it? On the diagonal is the hardest place. And then if you want to pulse it up from there, but you don't wanna drop your butt too much, you wanna keep it really stretching out in that hip everything down knees. So we were doing pretty short intervals, but we did a lot of different exercises for the glutes. From here though, we do want to stretch it out. You don't want to keep them in that little baseball shape. So coming up, we're going to put one foot down. The other one comes over. Now both of these sit bones need to touch the ground and you pull your knee to your chest. I'll go sideways so you can see a little better. So the reason that this is stretching the glute is because the sit bone's on the ground. And now just add a little bit of a twist. So you're twisting toward the foot that's, you know, tucked under. Lift the back. There's a nice little stretch for the glutes. Now stretch that leg long. The other leg is still out. So it's like, it's like tree pose kind of in yoga and then take it over for a little stretch. Let's do the other side so that we can get the baseball out of the glute. Here we go. I'll turn so you can see one leg comes under and the trick is to get both sit bones down and then stretch towards your tucked under foot. Get your back up. And because this sit bone is down, this, this glutes on the floor, both of them are, and you're letting this knee come to a stretch under the elbow. Yes, there we go. Stretching that glute out. It also feels good to do a little twist. And then we're going to take one leg out. It's like you're in tree pose. Flat back it over, you'll feel a little stretch. One of the nicest stretches to do is downward facing dog from yoga. It gives you just a little bit more stretch in the hamstring and the glute and the calves and the Achilles. So we're coming around, hands on the mat, downward facing dog. Now in downward facing dog, in order to stretch out the glutes, it's the opposite of contracting, right? So when you contract the glutes, that fold in the hip goes away. When you're stretching the glutes, you do have a big fold in that hip because it's the opposite. So right now, if you can tip your sit bones toward the ceiling, 
and get that crease even creasier, it's a stretch. Both knees bend. Let's come on up. Roll everything up. Take a deep breath in. And there you go. I hope you have nice, warm glutes. And if you want to learn more about anatomy and kinesiology, it makes such a huge difference in your workout. And if you're a teacher, if you understand the science and the kinesiology behind it, it makes you so much more effective. I do have a video. Um, this is a free video. I have tons of free videos, but I also have a video called Anatomy and Kinesiology that I made when I was training dancers, which is you know, the same kind of training as athletes, really, you know, as far as kinesiology goes. And I will put a link to it here where you can watch a free demo of that video. And I'll tell you where to go if you want to watch the whole thing. But if you like this video, can you please give it a like? And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you know whenever I have a new freebie coming out, you'll be the first to know. See you next time.